So what we also have to realize is that healing always occurs in a fluid environment. So there's always swelling, there was also edema in the area that is in, heal, is in the healing process. So we see swelling during the healing phase, swelling typically, typically causes pain. Easily, you know, there can be inflammation during the healing phase and fatigue and fever. So if we look at all these symptoms, discharge, pus, night sweat, swelling, pain, inflammation, fever, fatigue, we usually think that something is wrong, that we are sick. But it's quite the opposite is the case. Something is perfectly right and we are now in a healing process, in a natural healing process. So people often ask me, say, so what is GNM therapy? Well, my friends, the symptoms, the past, the discharge, the nights with the swelling, the pain and the inflammation is already the natural healing that is taking place. And as Dr. Hammer puts it so beautifully, if the patient has been made aware of all the facts, he will no longer need to get frightened by his symptoms. He can now fully accept these as the healing symptoms they are, all of which had until now caused fear and panic. In the greatest number of cases, the whole episode will pass without any serious consequences. So the role of the GNM practitioner is to assist the patient during the healing phase, during the healing process, right? To assist him. A German new medicine practitioner uh, will know how to support the healing process without interfering in it. Uh, also, by understanding the entire process, gentle interventions can be planned in order to slow down a severe healing phase or more intense healing phase and on top of it, um, uh, potential complications can be anticipated and can be addressed before they reach a critical point. Well, with the patient and the doctor, the practitioner working together, this healing phase can in fact be a life-affirming experience for both of them. So let's look now from what we have learned to the so-called immune system. So let's look about the immune system from, based on Dr. Hammer's discovery that cancer is not a malignant disease but a meaningful biological process and that microbes are in fact uh, beneficial as they help us in the healing phase, in this case as we learn, to decompose a tumor. Well, what is the immune system? According to conventional medicine, the immune system is a defense system against microbes and cancer cells. Thus, according to the theory, a weak immune system increases the risk of infectious diseases, we hear this all the time, and of developing cancer. Well, medical science views the immune system, or views, I should say, our body as a battlefield where white blood cells are ready to attack the enemy. In fact, daffodils are now, symbolically of course, also turned into weapons in order to fight cancer. But my friends, if we learn to understand that cancer is a meaningful process, that microbes are our loyal, loyal helpers, then the entire construct of an immune system falls apart. There is no immune system. The mean immune system does not exist. What exists, however, is a perfect biological system created to support us while we are healing. And that includes the supportive function of white blood cells, of antibodies, and many other 
biochemical processes. You see, Dr. Hammer puts everything on its head. Because if we learn that diseases are meaningful, that these are programs that have been, been practiced over millions of years, we realize that most theories of conventional medicine are based on assumptions that have actually never been substantiated. So let's look further. So what have we learned? We learned that all old brain control tissue caused cell augmentation during the conflict active phase, causing cer the certain uh, tumors to develop. And during the healing phase, these tumors are decomposed with the help of tubercular bacteria or fungi only, exclusively with those type of bacteria. And we learned that all new brain control tissue generates a meaningful tissue loss in order to facilitate a conflict resolution. So let's see what happens now on the organ level of these tissues that cause tissue loss during the active phase. Remember we talked about the cervix related to a sexual conflict that causes during the active phase tissue loss and widening of the cervix in order to facilitate the conflict resolution. So let's see what happens during the healing phase. Well, the moment the conflict is resolved, the tissue loss, in other words, the ulcerated area, is refilled and replenished with new cells. And it is the cell proliferation that is now diagnosed as a cancer. Because of the cell proliferation, it is diagnosed as a malignant cancer. So here we find, for example, cervical cancer, right? as a healing phase of the cervix in healing as a result of having resolved a sexual conflict. But Dr. Hammer clearly shows that the cell proliferation is nothing malignant, that such a tumor is not malignant at all, but this tumor is in fact a good sign that the tumor is now in the healing process, that the tissue loss is refilled and replenished. So nothing malignant about this. And because of the healing nature of these tumors, Dr. Hammer calls this type of tumors a curative cancer or curative cancers. Other curative cancers of this type, a bronchial cancer, lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, ovarian cancer, testicular cancer, intraductal breast cancer, but also we find here skin rashes, bronchitis, laryngitis, hemorrhoids, and many other conditions that are basically organs controlled from the new brain, and they are all linked to very specific type of conflicts that Dr. Hammer has discovered. And of course, typically in the healing phase again, we see swelling, there is typically pain, potentially inflammation and fever, and of course also fatigue. Again, all signs that a natural healing is taking place. So one important point to point out is the following, that the cell proliferation, so refilling the tissue loss uh, during the healing phase only takes place during the first phase of healing. After this so-called epileptoid crisis, which I will explain in a moment, uh, the, uh, the tumor basically uh, degrades and slowly, slowly degrades and calcifies. And at the end of the program, the tumor is basically gone and all we see is scar tissue and often also scar tissue on the psyche, if I may say it this way. Okay, we're going to go to the brain level and see how these programs run on the brain level. Eh? We have learned that on the psychological level during the conflict active phase, we are preoccupied with the conflict, we can't sleep, we can't eat, right? We are totally focused on the conflict. On the conflict-related organ, we see either a tumor growth or tissue loss, depending what tissue is involved, in order to help us on the organ level to cope with the conflict and facilitate a conflict resolution. So let's see what happens on the brain level. Well, during the active phase, all we see is on a CT scan the sharp target ring configuration in the area of the brain that is involved. Physically, so on the brain level is such, physically, there is absolutely no symptom. 